Hey everyone, Jamie here. Spring is finally here and I'm loving every minute of it. Don't you just wish you could hang on to this good weather? Well, with my latest DIY, you can keep a piece of spring with you year round. Get ready as I show you how to make your own pressed flower decorations. Let's do it, girl. For this craft, you'll want to pick a variety of flowers. Now some flowers work better than others as far as pressing goes. Flat flowers, for example, like pansies, work the best, whereas rounded head flowers, like roses, don't really press very easily. So in that case, you'd want to take apart and use the individual petals. You're also going to need a book, a weight, craft glue and a paintbrush, and tissue paper. Finally, you're going to need a place to place your pressed flowers. You can grab a vase or candle votives, or you can be like me and buy a set of small frames with white cards. Stock. All right, let's put this flower pressing to the testing. Step one. The first step is to press your flowers into your book. Now it's best to use your flowers as fast as you can once you remove them from the stem so as to avoid flower wiltage. My recommendation is to take your book with you wherever you go a pickin', whether it's your backyard, on a hike, or even on vacation. That way you can stick your flowers straight into the pages. As you're choosing your flowers, make sure to include grass, leaves, and other decorative greens that can complement your flower arrangement. Now there are a couple of things you need to know before you press your flowers. One, make sure that your flowers are dry. If they're wet, then they can get moldy, which will then in turn make the pages of your book moldy. Speaking of which, number two is to make sure to keep your book clean. Set tissue paper on top of your page, place your flowers, and then lay down one more piece of tissue paper on top. Three, place your flowers face down or sideways, but never face up. If you press them face up, then your flowers are most likely going to crease unfavorably. And four, make sure to add a weight to the top of your book, whether it's an even bigger book, a heavy box, or an actual weight. Yeah. I work out. Step two, shut your book, press those leaves, and wait. Your petals need two to four weeks to fully dry out. Now if you're in a rush, then I would say wait at least one week and then keep your book in as dry space as possible. Other than that, make sure you let nature take its course and let your flowers dry on their own time. All right, you patient people, you. It's been three weeks and we're about to reveal our flowers. Ooh, look how pretty, totally worth the wait. Don't worry if your petals have shifted or separated, that's all part of the process. All that's left to do is show off these fancy floors. Step four, the final step is to design and glue in your flowers. Like I mentioned earlier, you can glue them around the outside of a candle votive or a plain glass jar. If you've got frames like me, take out the cardboard backing and use it as a template to re-measure your cardstock. Place your petals and leaves in any fashion you choose, locking them into place with a light layer of craft glue. This will also help them from fading in color and block out any moisture, whether it's humidity outside or a hot shower inside. Pop your glass back in and your pressed flower frames are complete. There are so many different ways to do this craft. You can glue little flower petals in the shape of your initial in order to make a monogram like I did with my candy pieces last fall. Or you can use a marker to make cute designs out of your flower petals. Or in order to save time, you can just skip the whole framing thing and now your cardstock has transformed into a greeting card. And there we go, some beautiful decorations made with some beautifully pressed flowers. This makes a phenomenal Mother's Day gift, which is why I'm showing it to you a month in advance so that way you have plenty of time for your flowers to dry. No matter what though, this DIY makes great room decor all spring, summer, and fall long. How did you design with your pressed flowers. Tweet me at Jamie Petito, Instagram me at HeyJamie, or just tell me all about it in the comments below. We did it girl, I'm Jamie and you're on girl.com. Answering flower questions. What type of flowers are good for pressing? Well, you want flowers that can lay flat, that can hold their color, and that have thin leaves. Examples include cosmos, geraniums, violets, and forget-me-nots, as well as ferns and leaves. Do your flowers have to be a specific size? Nope, you can make them as big as you want, as long as you have as big of a book or something similar to press them with. Now the flowers might take a little bit longer to dry, but when they're done, you can glue them onto like a big poster board or something to make a really great wall decoration. All right, go wrap that flower power. I'll see you next week. Finally, you're going to need a place to place your, finally, you're going to need a place to place your pressed, that's hard to say, to place your pressed, to place your pressed flowers. Ah, cool, Peter Piper. Mm -hmm.